Hi students, today we will look at Airport Rigid Pavement Design under the course CEC 412 presented by Engineer Bona Namde. We start with rigid pavement for different classes of airports. Rigid pavement consists of slabs of PCC, which is Portland concrete cement placed on a subbase that is supported on a compactable subgrade. Like flexible pavements, a properly designed rigid pavement provides a non-skid surface which prevents the infiltration of water into the subgrade while providing structural support to aircraft which use the pavement. The subbase under rigid pavements provide uniform stable support for concrete slabs. As a rule, a minimum thickness of 100 mm is required for all subbases under rigid pavements. There are various types of mixtures which are acceptable for rigid pavement subbases, including the first one here is item P154 for subbase costs, item P208 for aggregate base costs. We have item P209 for crushed aggregate base costs, item P211 for lime rock base course, we have item P301 for soil cement base, item P304 for cement treated base course, item P306 for eco econocrete sub base course, we have item P401 for plant mix bituminous pavements. Item P403 for HMA base course. For rigid pavements accommodating greater aircraft greater than 46,000 kg, maximum, maximum gross weight, a stabilized sub base is required, which include items P304, P306, P401. P403. Next, we look at rigid pavement for different kinds of airport. We're going to study Westergaard's analysis. Similar to the CBR method of design for flexible pavement prior to 2008, rigid pavement design using nomographs and other approximation charts based on the theories developed by H. M. Westergaard was the FAA standard. Westergaard's analysis of pavement design was founded in the mid-1920s and focused on the calculations of stresses and deflections in the concrete pavement due to applied loading. Westergaard assumed that the, the, pavement, the pavement slab to be a thin plate resting on a special subgrade which is considered elastic in the vertical direction only. That is, the reaction is proportional to the deflection of the subgrade. Where we have P is proportional to Z and the constant of proportionality is K. So here we said Z is the deflection and K is, this, is a soil constant refers to or referred to as the modulus of subgrade reaction. Other approximations are that the concrete slab is a homogeneous isotropic elastic solid and that the wheel load of an aircraft is distributed over an elliptical area. So we look at the graph we have here. This is the graph we use in the design. In this graph, we have the, con the concrete flexural strength in PSI, that is pound per square inch. You can see we have 500, 550, 600, 650, 700, 750, up to 900. So this, we read the flexural strength of the pavement from here on the left-hand side of the graph. Then here we have K value. We have our K value. Remember we said our K is a soil constant. So K value, we have for 50, we have for we have 100 we have 200 we have 300 
and we have 500. So here you can see contact area is equal to 168.35 square inch. Dual spacing is 34 in inches. Tandem spacing is 45 inches. So here we also have, here you can see our aircraft weight are given here. You can see 250 pounds, 225,000 250,000 pounds, 225,000 pounds, 200,000, 175,000, 150, and 125. So here we also have annual departures. You can see annual departures. We have well, for 1,200, for 3,000, for 6,000, for 15,000, for 25,000. So these are various annual departures that we have. And from on each annual departure, we can be able to read the various lab thickness. So we look at an example here. He said, although the, these assumptions do not satisfy the theory in a strict sense, the it doesn't satisfy theory in a strict sense. The result compared reasonably with observations. The Westergaard analysis was used to evaluate stress in a pavement as well as the deflection of the slab. For airports, Westergaard developed formulas for stress and deflection in interior of a slab and at an edge of a slab. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers applied Westergaard's formula towards the creation of approximation charts and design curves. Let's look at an example. The arrow found in the figure, talking about this figure, we have an arrow here, you can see. So what is this arrow talking about? Say so the arrow, it, it, it illustrates an example of a rigid pavement design analysis. Considering the use of a PCC mixture of flexural strength of 660 pounds per square inch. So let's look at the 660, you can see concrete flexural strength of in PSI, which is pounds per square inch. This is 650. So this is 700. So here between 650, 660, 670, 680, 690, 700. So this line here is 660. So we read it down to touch the K, K value. So from the question, let's see the K value that we have. Our K value is a subgrade with a K value of 100 pounds per cubic inch. So K value is in pounds per uh, cubic inch. So we go back to the graph. You see that from our 660, we're able to touch K value of 100. You can see this is 100, this is 50, this is 200, this is 300, this is 500, 500 pounds per cubic inch. So we're able to touch it from 660. Then here we still have, it says, for a Boeing 757 design aircraft with maximum gross weight of, so uh, the weight of the aircraft is 175,000 pounds. And the annual departure is 6,000. So let's see how to read the thickness. So here we have, we said that the weight is 175,000. So with the flexural strength of the concrete being 660, we're able to touch the soil constant, which is 100, given to us. 760, 660 pounds per square inch. Moving down to touch the soil constant, K, you can see 100, we are giving 100 in the question. That is 100 pounds per cubic meter. So once we're able to touch it, we read down to touch, you can see for the weight of the aircraft, these are the various weights. So for our question, we have 175. So we touch that to 175 and then move down to the right so that we can be able to touch the annual departure. Our annual departure is 6,000 for the question. You can see that we are giving 6,000, annual departure of 6,000. So we go back. And see from when we touch this annual departure, this one to this 3,000. So this line moves down to touch the annual departure of 6,000. So at 6,000, this one is for 1,200, this is for 3,000, this one is for 6,000. So when we touch that, you see that 
the thickness of the pavement is between 11 and 12, very close to 12. So we approximate it to be approximately 12. So you can see that's what we have here. That's why we said the eye will find in figure one illustrates an example of rigid pavement design analysis. Considering the use of a PCC mixture of flexural strength of 660 pounds per square inch, a subgrade with K, that is soil constant, value of 100 pounds per cubic inch for a Boeing 757 design aircraft with maximum gross weight of 175,000. And 600,000, 6,000 annual departures, resulting to a design slab thickness of approximately 12 inches. So you can see that we're able to, we have 12 inches from our graph. So we're able to use 600 and so we use 660, we move down to touch 100 for soil constant, and then also touch the weight of the aircraft, and then move down to connect our annual departure. So once we connect annual departure, we can now read the pavement thickness to be, to be 12 inches. So this is how you can design rigid pavement using Westergaard analysis.